Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart welcoming you to Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you with us again here in the month of November. Man, the thing's quite a year that we've had, and can you believe it's almost over. We're in the heart of the fall, pretty much lost lost or losing all of our leaves now, uh, and we're getting ready for you know what. So (laughs) what can we say? It's got to come. It's got to come. It really does. We need it to come. We need the change of the seasons because the change of the seasons gets us ready for uh, the next thing coming in our lives. It helps us to prepare uh, for what is coming up next. So I pray that you are, are hanging on through this and getting ready for it and accepting that the change is definitely a coming. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to welcome you again to the program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church here, located in the city of Rochester, 1405 Lyle Avenue. If you're watching this program on the internet through our Facebook page or even on our YouTube channel, um, we're here in the city of Rochester. If you're ever in Rochester, by all means, come by and join with us in service. If you're here in the Rochester area, you know you can also see this on television on Rochester Cable Channel 15 or 5.15 if it's if you're watching on digital cable uh, throughout the city at different times and different locations different times depending on what part of the city that you live in so uh, connect up with us anytime if you miss any of the shows during the, on the weekend you can connect up with all of our shows on Facebook or our archive of shows on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to continue to stay connected. Some of the messages that we share, in fact, are continuous and connecting and building. So you have that opportunity to take what you received last week and continue to grow on it. And I do want to encourage you as well to by all means share this with somebody. Tell somebody else about the program that you've been watching and it's been a blessing to you. By all means, share it with somebody. It may be a blessing to them as well. You can also share it on your Facebook page. Share the message. Share the sermons that you see. Share the other things that are happening, the announcements uh, from your Facebook page. I encourage you, like things you see there, but also share it so that others can be blessed just as you are. Now, we're uh, in the midst of the harvest season. We're getting ready to actually celebrate our harvest day as we prepare for Thanksgiving. Uh, The Sunday before, just the next week, in fact, is our uh, harvest day, and we're looking Looking forward to a great celebration here. You're invited to come and join us for that. Should be a great time and a great time of fellowship as well as we stay after for our great harvest meal. Everybody brings something to pass. We're going to have the whole church turned over uh, to a banquet facility and we're going to have a great time in the Lord here. So you're invited to come and join us for that as well coming up next week. You know our regular services, Sundays and Wednesdays, including our Sunday school, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and our, our Christian education on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Our morning worship service at 11.30 a.m. here at Destiny Preparation Church. Now I want to take you to the Word of God. This is something I believe is going to uh, bless you. Last week we were talking to you about getting focused. This week I want you to renew your strength. And this actually carries into some things I'm going to share over the next couple of weeks. You know, there are times when it seems like we're going through, we're going through, we're going through, and we need a word, something to encourage us, strengthen us. This is a word, that word for you to let you know that God will renew your strength. You can be strengthened to go through. Don't give up, don't quit, don't get tired, don't get frustrated. Just hang in there. The Lord's going to renew your strength. I pray this blesses you, and I hope we'll see you here at Destiny Preparation Church. Real soon. Faith without works is dead. You can have a good idea, but if you don't do anything about it, amen, you have a great new business, but if you never start doing anything about it, you decide you want to, amen, get educated, but you never sign up for school. Amen. If you don't do anything about it, if you don't gain any roots, it sooner or later is going to die. Are you hearing me today? The devil will cut you off at the path by getting you, amen, not to even invest in the idea, in the mindset, in the change, in the seed that God has put in you. Amen. It sounds like a good idea, but I don't got time for that now. Hmm. He'll get you so busy. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I want to do it someday. Amen. I hope maybe maybe one day, amen, that'll happen. Amen. If there are no roots in your spiritual life, you can want to be saved. But if you never get the word in you, that's what we're talking about, Christian education. If you don't have the word in you, you cannot establish roots. You cannot be a solid, saved Christian, amen, in and out of the will of God. Amen. You have to learn how to be stable, how to be consistent. You need to be fed on a routine basis. Amen. In your natural body, what happens if you stop feeding? The car goes to empty. 
And sooner or later you die out. In your spirit, if you're not fed, if you're not learning something of God, if you're not receiving the word, if you're not digging into the word of God, amen, you will not gain roots. And sooner or later, it's just a matter of time, you will die. And it doesn't matter how old you are, amen, roots can die at any age. Oh, help us, Lord. I said roots can die at any age. You have to continue to nurture those roots lest they die. The third one is the one I really want to talk to you about because the third one, he talks about worldly issues. He talks about the cares of the world. Amen. He talks about, amen, amen, the distractions that come in your life. Strategy of the enemy, amen, is to put distractions into your life. It says it chokes out the seed. The third one is that seed that's already, amen, been planted, already has roots, has already been going to church, has already turned their life around, is already living saved. You done stopped cussing. You done stopped doing wrong. You done stopped doing all this crazy stuff. You done got yourself right. You come to church every week. Amen. You're trying to be faithful. Amen. And here comes the devil with distractions. Saints, you got to watch out for those distractions because you can be holy and still be distracted. You can be right up in the church and still get choked out because all of a sudden, amen, your mind and your focus is on things, amen, that become more important. We don't say it that way, but actions speak louder than words. It becomes more important than God. So, oh, yeah, I I love to do that, but, you know, I got to handle this. I got to take care of that. I got to go do this. I got to deal with that. Amen. You got to even be careful in the church because sometimes the work that we do for God can become a distraction to God. Help us, Lord Jesus. When we we become so focused on things, amen, and situations, rather than remembering the God who it is that we're doing it for. Why am I working? Why am I serving? Why am I teaching? Why, amen, am I ushering? Why am I on the soundboard? Why am I collecting money? Why am I doing these things? Why am I singing? Amen, it's not just to sound good, to do good. It's not just because I'm faithful. Y'all know we can do things just because we're faithful. I'm not doing it just because I'm faithful. I'm not preaching, amen, just because it's my job. Amen. I'm declaring, amen, what God has put purpose in me to do and to be. The reason I'm standing before you right now is not just because it's my turn. It's because it's my calling from God. It's my purpose to help somebody understand what it is that God has in your life. You have a purpose, and if you're not careful, the devil, if he can't steal it from you, he'll choke it out by distracting you in so many things. This is the day that we live in. It's a day, amen, of distractions. It's a day, amen, of busyness. It's a day, amen, of so many, amen, things going on. We have so many things that are trying to get your attention. Amen, amen. We moved, amen. It used to be, amen, that, that going to the, 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 the movies was a, a, a thing, amen, that we spent a lot of time doing. Today, you only have to go to the movies. You got it in your house, you got it on your television, you got it on your phone, amen. You got Netflix, it goes everywhere with you, amen. You you, you have everything right where you, there's so many things that are seeking your attention. Even when you're not busy, you're busy. You can't sleep at night because you got to get on the phone and check this and do that and the other. You wake up, you got to check this and do that. What's the status on this? What notes did I got? Who liked my my, my page? Who did this? Amen. There are so many things that keep you focused and distracted and busy. Amen. We don't have time to pray in the morning anymore because we're too busy connecting up on Facebook. What happened to praying at night, amen? What happened, amen, to having time for the things of God? What happened to reading the stu- reading the word of God? We don't have time. It's not that so many things are so important. It's just that we've developed a lifestyle of being busy. And the devil has so many things coming at you to take your attention. I said last week, when you watch television and watch the news, it used to be you used to sit there and watch and listen to somebody tell you the news. Now they've got the news going in. They've got the little thing going along the bottom. You're reading while you're watching. And it's not enough just to watch somebody anymore. they got to put in pictures of this and that because they got to keep your attention. And every story has to be, amen, no more than 90 seconds. Amen. You know that? No more than night because we can't we can't pay attention much longer than that. We got we go looking for something else. And so we got our phone while we're watching this and doing that. I can only imagine how the teachers deal today. Amen. With students in the rooms. How do you keep their attention? Keep them focused because we have so many distractions. I want you to understand that this is a strategy of the enemy to choke out your attention and your focus on God. The devil's trying to keep you busy. Tell somebody the devil's trying to keep you busy so he can keep you distracted. 
so he can keep you, amen, out of what it is that God really wants to do with you. Many of us can't hear the voice of God because we're too busy doing too many other things. We got so many things, we don't know how to stop and hear from God. Instead, we're just going and going and going and working and doing and doing, amen, instead of listening to what God has to say to us. And as a result, we become spirit, we become run down spiritually, emotionally, and naturally. We are run down. Somebody would say, I'm tired. Amen. Just feeling tired all the time. We are out of balance. There are too many things pulling at us. The devil is trying to choke you down, wear you down. You don't have time, amen, to have a praise for God. You don't have time to think about God. You don't have time to meditate on what God has said because there are so many other things that are pulling and dragging at you. And every time we get a little time, amen, open, what do we do? Find something else to put in it. It's a mindset, it's a societal moment that keeps us focused on everything and every other thing other than God. Distractions focus us on too many other things. And as a result, our priorities for God get out of alignment. Sometimes we may even be doing God's things, but not doing them God's way. We're doing things of God but we're not really doing them for God. I want to show you a story real quick. Some of you know it in the book of Luke chapter 10. It's the story of Mary and Martha. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. This story shows us two righteous people trying to do the righteous thing for the right Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Let me just read the story for you very quickly. It says, And Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. They came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are so upset over all these details. There's really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and I won't take it away from her. Sometimes you can be doing all the right stuff, but you get so focused on the stuff that you forget what you're doing it about. We got to be conscious. We got to be careful. Here's Martha working. She's doing the right thing. She's preparing a, din a dinner for Jesus. She's got to eat. Amen. Need some food. Amen. Nothing wrong with her preparing dinner for him. And she's focused. She's running around. She's getting all the preparations. Y'all know how y'all do. Amen. Got to get the table right. Amen. Got to food. Got to come out just right. Got to get the right china out. Get everything clean. Amen. Everything laid out just so the house got to be clean. You can't have nobody special over your house and the house not clean. Amen. So you got to get that right. Amen. People. Amen. In your house. Some of you got to get move out of the way. Amen. Get the dog where you need to be. Amen. Get everything situated. Everything's got to be right. She's running around getting everything right for Jesus nothing wrong with that to the contrast of that here's Mary her sister sitting up in her house and Jesus is there and instead of helping get this straight and get that right Mary's just sitting in front of Jesus <laughs> what you got to say Jesus oh yeah uh-huh talk to me teach me show me something and Martha's getting upset because she's like, look, we've got all these things to do. We're trying to get this right. Don't you think you should ask Mary to come and help me? How many people? <laughs> I've never been there. So focused on trying to do and get things right and, and, and do what needs to be done. Jesus speaks to her. And in essence, what he says to, to Martha, he says, look, Mary's found the real. She's found what it's all about. She under, you're focused on all these details, but Mary is focused on the core of what it's all about. The reason you had me over here, listen, this is me paraphrasing. The reason you had me over here wasn't to show me how good you can cook or, or just how good your china is. We don't need to show Jesus how good our china is. I guarantee you he's got better. I guarantee you he, he can find better food. 
But Jesus had something to pour into her. And instead of being in a position and valuing receiving that, she thought it was more important to do for him than to receive what God had for her. If you are not careful, distractions will get you so focused on what you're doing that you forget what you were doing it for. Y'all know what it is. You have visitors over your house. You eat, you feed them, you send them home, and now you're exhausted. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God, why did I have them over again? Lord, I can do that again for a while. <laughs> Didn't you have them over in order to fellowship with them? By the time all is said and done, you barely even talked to them because you was in the kitchen, you was cleaning, you was getting the dishes done. Da, 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 da. That was good. Glad you came. <laughs> 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 the whole thing. <laughs> Listen, working out of your own strength runs out. When you are running and pushing and driving and you're trying to make it happen and you're putting everything behind it, your strength is going to run out. It's just a matter of time. When you don't do things in the right strength in the Lord's strength and in, in alignment with why you're doing it and this is what happens to many of us you run so long and you run so hard and before you know it you stop realizing why you're running and all of a sudden you'd be like why am I so why am I doing this I'm so tired why am I still running why because you've lost track of where you were trying to go you've lost track of why you were preparing the dinner. You're so focused on getting everything right, you forgot that the reason for the dinner was so I could get closer to Jesus. And now here's Jesus right here, and you off over there doing things for him when he's already right here in front of you. Wasn't the reason for this to get closer to God? You can run and burn and work so much that instead of getting closer to God, you're getting further and further away. Running in your own strength runs out. There's a time to slow down. Listen, there are three things that you need to do. Your strength. Your strength comes from three things. Your strength comes from your feeding. Everybody say feeding. feeding. You have to eat the word of God. You have to receive something from God. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. You have to receive from God. You return, regain strength by feeding. Number two, you regain strength, amen, through your breaks. Everybody say you need a break. That's a break from your routine. That's a break from the natural things. Your time of worship is your time of break. It's your time to escape from all the things you've been rushing and trying to do and deal with. And it's a time to get into God. It's a time, we call it, of refreshing. Your worship is a, time, a break time. Your prayer time is a break time. It's a time to escape from everything you've been doing. Every, tell somebody, everybody needs a break. Spiritually, you need a break on your job. That's why they put breaks on your jobs. You need a break. Even they understand that. Not only do you need it physically, you need it emotionally. You need an emotional break. Some kids be done drove, in, drove you to the... Beyond the point of... Tell somebody you need a break. Spiritually, you need a break. You need to be recharged. You need a chance, amen, to refill the tank. You need a chance, amen, to, to get it back in, in gear again. The third thing... Your strength comes from your recovery. Your recovery is God pouring purpose into you. You need God to refill you, to put the gas back in the gas tank. You need God to pour into you. So I, I, I take my break and I get in the presence of God. I worship, I, I pray, I, I focus on God, I meditate on God, and then God begins to pour into us. This is the reason why we worship, by the way. You don't worship, amen, just to sound good, just to have good music. We worship, amen, to get in the presence of God so that, so that here's the reason, so that God can pour into us. Yes. That's the end goal. It's not just for us to sound good, not just for us to just look ugly. <laughs> 
It's for us to open ourselves so that God can pour into us. If you don't open yourself, how can God pour into you? You've got to go into his presence and open yourself. That's what your worship is. God, here I am. I'm opening. I'm exposing myself to you. Worship is about exposure. The very inside, the very personal side of you that nobody else gets to see, nobody else gets to know. God, I'm exposing it to you. And in the midst of that, God pours into you. you saints of God, there are times where you got to stop and pull into the gas station, and open up the gas cap, and let God pour into you. The gas station is a resource that never runs out. And when you're about to run out, you go back and allow yourself to be poured into. You need to be poured into. Strength comes from feeding, it comes from breaks, it comes from recovery. Even Jesus needed a break. Even Jesus needed a recharge. The Bible says that he went into the mountains to pray. He did it often, he did it frequently. After pouring out to all them crazy folks, feeding 5,000 here, fighting devils and demons over here, amen, dealing with people with their negative attitudes, amen, yeah, because that'll take a lot out of you, by the way, amen, people with their negative attitudes and you still trying to be holy, you trying to, hallelujah, I need a recharge, because I'm about on empty right now, I need to charge me up, God, Amen. You got to you got to get you got to be recharged. You got to be refueled. Even Jesus went to the mountains to pray. The Bible says, amen, that in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says in Luke 22, 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Even Jesus needed to be strengthened for what he was going through. You need to be renewed. You need renewed strength. Leave you this last scripture from Isaiah chapter 40 and 31. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You got to wait on the Lord so that he can renew. You got you to pull into God's parking station, gas station, and wait on the Lord to fill me up. Fill me up. Song we sung, was it last week? Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. God, I need you to fill me up. They that win in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You've got to be recharged. You need to be renewed. You need your strength renewed. Tell somebody, get your strength back. Get your strength back. Comes a time you can only fight so many battles before you got to recharge. Any army that fights a battle has to go back and, and, and renew themselves. They got to get, get more ammo. They've got to get uh, replenishments. They've got to eat. They've got to rest to get ready for the next battle. Some of you are fighting battle after battle after battle, war after war, running from thing to thing, from doing this to doing that to doing that. Amen. Your schedules just go from this to that to the other to here to there. Boom, 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 boom. And there's no rest. I tell married couples every now and then you need to, you need to, especially you got kids, you better put some something somewhere. And you can't wait for it to happen. You have to make it happen. Amen. This is a day where every moment that you have free, something is waiting to fill up. So if you're going to get that rest, you're going to have to make it happen. You may have to schedule in your rest time, okay? On Saturday from 1 to 3, this Saturday, mm -mm, do not call. Will not answer the phone. Oh, but it might be an emergency. Whatever. Amen? Look, there are other people than you. You don't have to solve everybody's problem for everything. Can I get a little bit of attitude here? Amen? You don't have to be everybody's miracle worker for everything. Tell them there is a God. There is, he, he's able. Somebody say he's able. And he will prove it next Saturday between 1 and 3. Because whatever you need, God's got it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need a break. Jesus went up in the mountain, then came back down, and then he was ready to deal. Jesus wanted to make sure, and he says this in John, that, that the things that he said, they were not his own. The words that he said, he says, are the words of my father. 
in order to do that, he had to get recharged with his father's words. You got to make sure that you're still on point. You got to make sure that you're still tuned up, lined up, because the further you are and the longer you are away, the more we start drifting. And I'll put it to you this way. The further you are outside of the presence of God, the more you start drifting back into your natural self. Hmm. The more you start drifting into that, that, that old you, the one that you got rid of, that you let go of, will start showing up. The longer you stay out of the presence of God, because it's the presence and power of God that changes us. If the anointing, if the power of God, the Holy Spirit isn't keeping you, amen, the longer you stay away, the more the old me starts showing up. Ooh, that, that sounds like old me. <laughs> old me is showing up again. Better go back to the house. Better go back to prayer. Get on your knees. Amen. I was fine, but I got tired. I got a little frustrated. And oop, I don't know what came out. Where'd that come from? Thought that was dead. You got to be renewed. 